Hello there, and welcome to episode 38 of Colonization Project. We start today's episode off in low carbon orbit, where we are controlling the orbital tug that we sent up quite a while ago. Um, it, it's still in part that uh, I believe carbon, no, it's um, Space Lab, I think, since like episode 7. So we haven't used it that much, but it does have a purpose right now, and that purpose is to transfer scientific data from Opportunity and Sunset Star into Horizon, because we're going to be going out on a year-long trip journey out to Jewel, so we might as well uh, have data for the scientists to research while we are out there. We haven't used the Kerbin Space... No, it's not. It's Space Lab. Um, we haven't used it much because... Um, low carbon orbit stations don't really serve much of a much of a purpose in this game. The only real reason why you would build one is either because they're cool, or that you need money from tourist contracts. Those are really the only two reasons why. Anything else is just useless. They don't produce much science. Um, I mean, they could serve as like an orbital construction dock, but you might as well build that around Minimus, and you know, shipping things out from Kerbin is expensive. You kind of want to do that off-world, which is why we haven't built one yet, even though having an, a, um, a, an orbital construction dock is really effective for building interplanetary spacecraft. Um, shipping things up is really expensive, and we kind of can't do that right now. And also, I want to have a really big orbital construction dock instead of having a bunch of tiny ones. Um, because like if you have a tiny little space station and then giant interstellar spacecraft right next to it, that's gonna look kind of strange. Although it does make sense because like there's no limit to how big you can build stuff in space. Um, and if you have a tiny space station that can just do everything in a small space, and that's perfectly fine. But like it just looks kind of strange. But Chances are the interstellar spacecraft will still be a lot bigger than a, any space station ever could be. Um, and inertial confinement fusion engines are not tiny. They are they're they're quite massive. Um, and going interstellar requires a lot of it. Um, anyways, you just saw there we have arrived at Opportunity, collected all the scientific data, and we can now send up a refueling mission because it does it doesn't have enough fuel to reverse its orbit again. Um, Opportunity is still in a retrograde orbit, which I probably should have reversed its orbit instead of reversing um, the tug's orbit, uh, but oh well, I recorded this already, so, um, and also, you know, you get more rocket launches. Um, this is the fuel module, it's launched aboard this um, solid rocket booster rocket, um, once again, going with... Using, using it for medium payloads that we don't really need uh, Colossus for, because I think that's going to be our main reusable launch vehicle. The Sarnus was, could carry about as much payload as this, and it was probably more expensive to reuse it than um, it would be to just toss it into the ocean, although using that exact booster would not be the case, but we can easily get the payload to orbit with separate boosters. And... We don't really need the sort of like mid-tier of the Sarnus booster anymore. Um, that's like stuff we need for like sending small satellites out to Joule. But we're not sending small sa satellites out to Joule anymore. We are sending big satellites or a lot of small satellites. Which means if we're sending a lot of small satellites, we can just pack it all into a rideshare mission on a Colossus and, and yeet it out to the Joule system. Um, and if we're launching small satellites, we might as well just use this rocket. Um, so yeah, Sarnus doesn't really have much of a purpose anymore. You know, I'm not officially retiring it yet, but um, you might not see a bit more of it in this series, which is kind of sad considering it has launched a lot of important stuff up to orbit. But you know, you might see it in the future. You might also, like I said, not because we don't really have a purpose for it. Um, although reusable rockets I will still always be using those um, there's really no point to not um, I, I say that as we are launching this on a, an expendable rocket but like sometimes it's just more worth more um, it's all about effort you know like 
I don't want to be spending more video time that could be easily filled with other video launching a rocket and reusing it than, um, than I could be um, just doing other stuff. You get more video per video. Um, but yeah, I always have expendable re reusable rockets. There's no reason those are going away. Um, the Colossus booster is way too expensive not to be recovered. Um, so yeah, that's... Um, it's not the end of them, but we just have more than zero, I guess. Anyways, we have just sent the refueling module up to the tug, and we can now reverse the orbit once again in order to hit the Sunset Star, which actually doesn't. It's not our main priority. Um, Sunset Star doesn't have as much scientific data as Opportunity, because Opportunity couldn't ac actually research much of it, um, because the solar panels on it couldn't uh, can, can supply enough electric charge to everything at once. So we, so we had the option um, of either running the life support systems or running the labs. I originally went with the, the labs because I thought we had enough life support in order to, in order to uh, contain, give the crew enough time to return home. But as it turns out, I don't think that was the case. So I turned the labs off and turned the live support recyclers back on. And um, yeah, so I didn't, that's why I have like 80 plus experiments um, that we didn't get to researching, but that's okay. That's just more experiments for, um, more experiments for uh, Horizon to research. I mean, like once again, they're going on a year long trip out there, so. We might as well have some have some data to research while we are out there. Anyways, we have reversed our orbit once more, um, probably for the final time. I don't want to be going into retrograde orbits again. Um, we can toss that spent stage back into the atmosphere and um, head down to Sunset Star. Uh, this will just take quite a bit of time. As you can see, we're about two days through this mission. Yeah. Wait, is is yeah, two days, um, but that's okay. Uh, the dual transfer window is coming up shortly, but it's nothing that we can't hit. And besides, transfer windows don't really matter because like we're going, we're taking a really fast trajectory out there. Um, they'll, like I said, they they will arrive there in about to eat a year. Um, so yeah, we don't really need a perfectly efficient transfer window, but. Um, you know, it's always good to not have to go around the sun to do, to go to another planet. We're not quite at that technology level yet. Um, and it's going to be hard to get to that point. Um, but you know, maybe this mission will allow us to get to that point. You, you know, like I, I expect this mission to net somewhere around 20,000 science points, which, um, pro is probably going to be more because, that's enough to get you like four tech nodes in KSP Interstellar. Um, but, you know, it, it is going to gain us a lot of science. Anyways, we've just arrived at Sunset Star and we can transfer the not very much data that we have on it. We only have like three experiments that we didn't get to researching because I actually designed Sunset Star well and um, it has. La la electric charge generation that can support it for um, increased periods of time. I, although it did go out to Eve instead of Duna, so I guess that has an effect. Um, speaking of improvements between the two, although I guess it would be deprovements because, like, is that a word? No, it's probably not, but like it unimproved itself because they were built. Since opportunity was built after Sunset Star. Anyways, that probably won't be the last time we've seen we are going to see Sunset Star, because it has we can replace the engine module on it just fine. Um, opportunity, on the other hand, we can't replace anything on it, so that's probably going to be the last time we're going to see Opportunity unless we deorbit it. Um, although that would be cool, seeing a massive space space spaceship deorbit. Um, Although, we might keep it up as a tourist attraction or something, I don't know. Um, but, after 
after we get some decent technology with like fusion engines and stuff and stuff that we don't have to attach massive radiators for i mean we could add some radiators to sunset star but i eh, don't really want to right now but like we could very well replace um the engines on sunset star with like open cycle gas core engines or the very primitive fusion engines that we have right now actually the open cycle gas core engines are more efficient than the fusion engines which is which is quite strange because they're not if you have fusion engines you're you're supposed to be like the pinnacle of technology like nothing compares to it but no we have better nuclear engines um but those also produce i think more heat of although the more efficient your engine, the more efficient your engine is. Chances are, the more heat you're going to produce. But you know, um, we could very well replace the engines on Sunset Star with new ones, and and then like send it back out to Eve or maybe Moho. Uh, probably not to the outer solar system because um, and that just doesn't seem like the thing that it would do. Um, but I think a mission to Moho would definitely be with an an upgraded. Uh, Sunset Star's capability. Um, I mean, I mean, it definitely could do that. Um, nothing really stopping us from not, because we can always just add more fuel tanks. Only thing we would be keeping is the core stage, but why would we um, toss that away? And because like it's perfectly good, we might as well reuse it for um, future missions. But that thing probably can't go out to Jewel, even with some modification, which is why we've built this, Horizon. Um, it ha the orbital tug has arrived, and it can finally transfer all of its data to the uh, spaceship. And, you know, they can research all the data. We're not going to be taking the tug out to Jewel. I don't think that would be very beneficial to us. It's still using chemical engines. The, not even a solid core fission engine like we have on minimus not even that just using a tiny little rl10 engine has like probably 300 seconds of isp probably more but um you know it it's not it, it, it's 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 a spacecraft that's showing its age um but this 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 thing sure isn't um this is sapphire it's our new ssto it's going to head out to jewel more specifically it's going to head out to lathe although it might be able to go down to Jewel, it might be able to dip into the upper atmosphere a bit. Um, although with the opens, the nuclear jet engines, it definitely could go down to Jewel. Only problem is though, it's atmospheric heating because if you're traveling four kilometers per second in Jewel's atmosphere, that is not going to end well for you, especially if you don't have a heat shield, which this thing doesn't, it doesn't have a heat shield. Um, I mean, I'm not sure why, it, you know it's weird like how none of the space plane parts have a heat shield although that would be i think that would be difficult to program wouldn't it um but you know none of, the, none of our ssto's actually have heat shields on them which is strange we're just kind of hoping the fuel tanks are able to survive cryogenic fuel tanks and high heating doesn't really mix well um but somehow in Kerbal space program it does so um, I mean, that's why SSTOs work, although if you look at Endurance's nose cone for like a couple flights, it didn't really work well, <laughs> although that was a nose cone, it wasn't a cryogenic tank. It was also the first part in the airstream, so like it took a lot of heating and yeah, that nose cone didn't really work well, although I have replaced it. I think I've upgraded Endurance with a bit more stuff like... Um, I upgraded the nose cone, I refilled the monopropellant tanks, all that. Because the previous missions of Endurance actually didn't have any monopropellant on them. Um, I've just forgot to refill the tanks. So I, 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 I took the opportunity to refill them because, you know, it's kind of painful not to have monopropellant. We can't maneuver the spacecraft as well. And the reaction wheels do the, do, do the job on the smaller spacecraft, but... Uh, they don't really work for docking because they provide they provide a rotational control, not translation control. Anyways, we've arrived at Horizon with the new SSTO, um, and 
yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I should probably cut some of this out, shouldn't I? But cutting it out would like mean you don't. I actually did try and cut out like some of the maneuver node editing parts of the first mission where we were, um, where we were, whatchamacallit, um, transferring all the scientific data. Um, that only saved me a couple of minutes and was much, much harder to edit. So I don't think I'm going to be doing that because like if you do like a graph of like the effort and then the benefits, like the, the effort outweighs the benefits, I think. Is it the other way around? No, no it's not. But anyways, you can see um, why the truss segment looks so weird now. It's actually suppo supposed to be like a hangar bay, makeshift hangar bay for um, Sapphire. I actually never said why I named it that. Uh, it's just going with the old Julian naming theme. Is that how you would say it? Didn't I ask this in the last episode? Or was it another take of this one? Is that like the right term to use? I think I might have asked that in the last episode. I can't tell. I've done way too many takes of this episode. This is one of the episodes that just takes me way too many takes in order to um, completely get one that I like because I've just not been able to record a video lately and then like I try to and then I'm too tired and lose track and all that stuff. Uh, hopefully this one doesn't turn out the same way. It, it's going good so far. Um, I think hopefully it is. Maybe maybe my microphone isn't picking up and it's using the not very good one on the computer. Um, hopefully that isn't the case. Hopefully like um, the microphone is working because I, I've actually had that happen before. I had like a perfectly good take but then the microphone wasn't on and then like it was just like no I want to record via the computer's microphone instead and I'm just like what? Um, hopefully that doesn't happen this time. I, that, would, that would not be very good. Um, anyways, after docking the two spacecraft together up at Horizon, uh, we are launching uh, some infrastructure up to Jewel. Um, so we need. So I did send up that Jewel base. How, however, um, we're not going to be using it that much. I originally, I originally wanted to like have, I wanted to have like a base on Jewel and then a tug in order to resupply all the fuel, but I was like, that's going to take way too much time in order to, in order to, um, fill up Horizon. So I'm deciding I'm not going to do that. And instead I'm going to use MKS Wolf in order to, um, you know, like transfer the fuel automatically, because that is a much more easy way to do it, and can probably it's probably much more efficient, um, both on fuel and my sanity, because I don't want to be doing a hundred trips up and down to the surface, just to get just to refuel a bit of fuel on a spacecraft. Um, but you know, this will be hopefully more efficient. Um, anyways, the starships are carrying depot modules. Um, we need one of them in low, low pole orbit because we're, we're setting up the refueling station on pole because that's just probably the best place to do it. Um, it has the lowest gravity of all the dual moons and, you know, it has that nice cliff. Um, you know, it's, it's quite a cool lo location. Um, so we need one of them in, on the surface and one of them in orbit, and then we need a refinery module, no, an extra, an extractor module, in order to, um, well, extract the resources, and then we need another module docked to Horizon so that it can transfer, so that it can um, create liquid fuel from the ore, because we're not actually going to be um, refining the or into the liquid fuel um, with the wolf system um, because that would require us to like have refineries and that would re require us to have a crew that would require us to have food and it just gets more complicated from there 
So we're not going to do that. Instead, we are going to just have just ship up the ore, which we can do without any crew or any other resources. And we can just refine it on Horizon, which will have crew on board. So hopefully it works out. Um, I actually didn't test any of this because I just didn't want to, I guess. But I didn't test any of this, and I'm just hoping it works. Um, I don't think I recorded the first escape burn out from Horizon. I think I forgot to do that. But it does have some overheating problems. I did. I don't think I tested a full burnout to Jewel. And... Yeah, the engines overheat. Even with all the radiators that we have, it's still overheat. So, we're going to need to fix that. Actually, we can't fix that. They are, they kind of just are out there. We can't really send a resupply mission up there. Um, I mean, I tried to, but that didn't work. It's already in too much of an eccentric orbit. Um, so yeah, the crew is just kind of out there with an engine can't, that can't burn for more than five minutes. <laughs> Whoops. Um, hopefully that won't have any problems later on. Although to be fair, um, we're going to be farther out from Kerbal um, when we perform the escape burn, at the capture burn and escape burns at Jewel. So maybe the less lessened heat from the sun will allow us to will allow us to perform longer burns although i do think that if we um use the tylo gravity assist that we could very well shorten the burn time of uh the capture burn although we can't really do that at Kerbin, you know we have to i mean we could get a mon gravity assist but that's not going to do much Anyways, I talked over that entire thing because we weren't really doing anything interesting. So that was the tanker module because we want this thing to be fully fueled. And yeah, that was pretty much it. I'm not sure why I left that much of it in. But the main spacecraft with the module can perform its escape burn. Arrived there at about the same time as everything else. And, you know, we can um have a infrastructure at jewel um the, we're also using, we're not using like a modified version of starships like without the wings because i figured if we're sending a starship out there we might as well use it for more than one purpose you know like we could send stuff stuff down to the surface of lath with it um so it's going to be quite i think it's going to be helpful to have a couple starships around jewel Anyways, that one thing that the starship that we sent out couldn't actually generate power, and it didn't have any an any antennas. That is not good, is it? So, I didn't want to send up a new module, and I didn't want to just cheat something up there because, oh, well, that would be cheating. So we're sending up this. It is pr quite possibly the fastest manned spacecraft we have ever made. Actually, it would be crippled spacecraft. So it's this tiny little thing at the top, on top of a massive Colossus booster, um, because we need the extra fuel. Um, five open cycle gas core engines, one brave Kerbonaut, and a lot of hope that it will make it. That's and maybe like some, some duct tape um, holding it all together. That's pretty much what all of our spacecraft is. It's held together with duct tape and luck. Um, anything else, we can't really engineer. So this will try and attempt to catch the spacecraft that is already going at 4 kilometers per second out of the system. Yeah, it's, qu it's quite the crazy endeavor, but I can't be bothered to send up more starships. So, yeah, that's pretty much all this mission is. Um, I forgot to attach radiators to it, and when you have open cycle gas core engines that literally melt themselves, yeah, not having radiators is quite a bad idea. And, you know, I, just, I designed this in a hurry because, you know, 
every 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 second that we're not catching that spacecraft it gets four kilometers um further away so we need we need to catch that spacecraft rather rather quickly if we want to be efficient on our fuel and to not have a Kerbal stranded in deep space. Although if the Kerbal does get stranded, like the escape burn, the um, slowdown burn doesn't happen, I'm, pr I'm pretty sure Horizon could um, manage a mid-course correction to go and pick them up. I'm sure that won't be too much of a problem, Other, and, and it would be quite amusing to see, like, um, spacecraft just gets an emergen emergency vi visitor from uh, deep space, you know. Um, anyways, we can perform a rather quick escape burn. Um, this thing actually does have quite a bit of thrust to weight ratio, although we kind of need it in order to. We can have a low thrust to weight ratio. Um, like, if it's too low, then we can't actually catch it because this thing needs to have quite the. Quite the um, uh, delta v margin in order to get to it which is why we're also using asparagus staging uh, so it's an open cycle gas core using the most efficient rocket engines that we have and we're still using asparagus staging efficiency was my number one priority and even if we had enough fuel to get out there i didn't want to risk it coming back because um we don't want to have a kerbal stranded in deep space like i said um this mission was also made harder by the fact that I didn't actually have the little intercept nodes. I don't think it works on both the spacecraft or on an escape trajectory, but uh, eventually I do get it. Um, I do get some sort of escape burn. Escape, no. Um, intercept nodes. And we get, we're, we managed to arrive at um, the spacecraft, which is almost a miracle because this. Um, it's a lot harder than rendezvousing in low carbon orbit, um, because you have to deal with, like, gravity slowing you down, and you need to be, like, many times faster than it in order to get to it. Like, we are also, I mean, we could have had this mission go out into solar, into solar orbit, but I think that would make it, that would make it harder to get back. And... You know, I wanted to keep this within Kerbin's sphere of influence. You know, if the Kerbal doesn't, we want to make sure the Kerbal doesn't get uh, too homesick. Because if a Kerbal gets homesick, they can't control the craft. Um, I, I did think about this, and thankfully we do have a probe core on it. Um, but if the probe core runs out of electricity, then we're adrift in space. Um, anyways, after attaching two RTGs and one massive antenna, and turning off inf infinite no ignore max temperature because i was trying to think of a sort of an excuse that would allow me to uh circumvent this this happening um i was just, just like no let's left with it uh explosions are cool i guess very kerbal um thankfully after the service module explodes for some reason and um the engine explodes too um, we can, uh, th thankfully, the entire thing remained in line, even though they were two separate craft. So thankfully, we managed to get back to Kerbin. Um, however, what I thought was a 57-kilometer periapsis was not a 57-kilometer periapsis, because that was the trajectory out after we got an imaginary Mun encounter um that if we didn't hit Kerbin. However, as it turns out, that was not my trajectory into the atmosphere. My, why why is that there? Oh well, that's an editing mis mishap. Let's just let's just let's just ignore that for now. Um might be in the final video, it might also not. I might put context somewhere. Um that didn't turn out to be our final trajectory. Instead, we slam into the upper atmosphere at four, five, five, is that, what number is that? I think that's like five kilometers per second. And you pull about 27 Gs. Um, thankfully, our brave Kerbinaut is not just a smear, a green smear on the control panel. Thankfully, she survived. So we can deploy the parachute and, I don't know, recover the crew, ticker, ta ticker tape parade, all that stuff. Um, 
Because we saved a jewel mission, and I guess that's important. Although, yeah, we could have just sent up another one. Anyway, so that'll be the end of this episode, so thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.